the spread of Tiberium devastated the Earth's environment and geopolitical structure to an apocalyptic level. What were once grasslands, oceans, and even cities were consumed by this extraterrestrial material and replaced by vast fields of unchecked crystalline growth. There were few symbols of hope in the darkest years of the Tiberium Age, but if nothing else, a feeling of satisfaction arose from the image of Tiberium crystals ground and shattered beneath the treads of mammoth tanks. One of the defining pieces of military hardware first utilized by the Global Defense Initiative, the mammoth tank evolved into a family of vehicles that saw combat service across each of the Tiberium Wars. Successive variants were often entirely redesigned, but each model featured the same basic characteristics and fulfilled the same battlefield role. The X-66 Mammoth, retroactively known as the Mammoth Mark I, was a heavy tank intended to smash through enemy fortifications and armored formations. Its most distinctive characteristics were its twin 120mm cannons, secondary missile pods, and four independent tracks. These elements in particular would be maintained across every subsequent Mammoth model. The X-66 was powered by an atomic generator and equipped to undertake limited battlefield repairs. Emphasizing firepower and protection at the expense of speed, the first generation of Mammoth tanks easily outmatched even the most advanced combat vehicles in service within the Brotherhood of Nod. During the First Tiberian War, Nod's leadership viewed the introduction of the X-66 as a major threat and specifically targeted production lines to forestall its entry into widespread service. This was largely unsuccessful, and Mammoth tanks would be steadily incorporated into GDI armies over the course of the war. By the outbreak of the Second Tiberian War, the X-66 had become outdated and was phased out of service within the GDI. In the increasingly ravaged landscapes of Earth, the GDI began to emphasize the role of mechanized, armored walkers. The X-66's replacement shared the Mammoth name, but represented a complete design shift. Despite the impressive performance of the Mammoth Mark II during the conflict, issues with reliability and production costs prematurely ended the program in 2039. With more traditional tracked vehicles again favored, the Mammoth Mark III included the distinctive dual guns, now modernized with 150mm cannons, missile pods, and the four tracks first seen on the X-66. Its design emphasized reliability and endurance, particularly within extreme environments. During the Third Tiberium War, the design was substantially upgraded, with dual railguns replacing its original cannons and the inclusion of advanced adaptive armor. The Mammoth Mark IV heavy tanks were the last to be produced within the wider family of vehicles and a response to the invasion of the alien Skrin. Featuring the same basic armament and systems as the Mark III, the chassis was stouter and its silhouette more reminiscent of the original X-66. While arguably the most effective heavy tank ever put into service, the reintroduction of Walker designs within both the GDI and the Brotherhood of Nod presented new threats and counters to the Mark IV. It is easy to see the Mammoth family of tanks as a fitting symbol for the Global Defense Initiative. Both evolved to meet the threats of an ever-changing world, and both succeeded in overcoming it. And with the threat of Tiberium dwindling across the world, and the Brotherhood of Nod a fading memory, the era may have finally arrived in which both the GDI and the Mammoth tanks are no longer needed. In Arsenal, the Templin Institute investigates the weapons, vehicles, and other constructs from across alternate worlds. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to join the Templin Institute, consider pledging to our Patreon page. Along with increased security access, you'll be able to vote in polls to determine future topics, get custom wallpaper every week, and receive some other exclusive rewards.